Hey, what's up, freaks? This is Steve Does, episode number two. You know, on Tuesdays, we have Steve Says. Thursdays, we do, we have Steve Does, where we're talking more about the mindset, the way you need to be thinking on Tuesdays. And then Thursday, we're talking about what you actually need to be doing in the trenches when it comes to your fitness, your training, your nutrition, and whatever other questions you might have. I'm going to pull you guys up here on my screen before we get rolling. If you have any questions, you can ask them right here. I also have some questions you guys sent in earlier today or throughout the week that I have to answer for you. So we're going to get started. So this is our live broadcast every Thursday on health, fitness, training, nutrition, but of course, all peak freak style. You know that's how we're going to do it. It's basically live episode about what are you struggling with right now, today, this week, this freaking minute in weight loss, fitness, training, health, nutrition, in reaching your goals or determining your goals or figuring out what your goals are. It's episode number two, Steve Does. We're going to be talking about what is your definition of health and then answering some of your questions we have later on. You already know that we train different. We eat different. We are freaking different. We are different because we are peak freaks. And you're going to learn all about our unique training systems, how we are preparing for the invasion, our weight loss strategies, nutritional discipline, and our educational eating. We don't really do diets. We have a completely different way, our own unique way of doing our training and the nutrition different than anybody else really out there does it on either one of those. And that's what gets us ridiculous, guaranteed freaking results. If you have any questions, you can put the questions in the comments right here. We'll we'll go over them right as we're going along. I have you right here. We also have some questions that you guys sent in earlier today that I'm going to cover at the end. You can send them in now. You can send them in throughout the week or whatever. I hear some footsteps coming, so I'm getting the hell out of the way for a second. Very, very normal kids. They just wake up and start screaming that shit. They go to sleep, they start screaming that shit. They're in their sleep, dreaming, drooling on themselves, and they start screaming that shit. So anyway, if you have any questions, put them in the comments here. I'll check them out. We'll answer your stuff live about fitness, nutrition, training. We're trying to keep it in that scope about what we're talking about. Pretty much the questions should be somewhere in line of what we're talking about. But we're going to get rolling here. So you know these live episodes are always going to have some set topics But it's really going to be based off of your questions, your needs. What do you need help with right now? What are you struggling with out out there? So, you know, last week we talked about fitness and what fitness meant to you and how fitness is really freedom. It's the physical freedom to do what you want, when you want, how you want, and for how fucking long you want. That is what fitness is. It's a freedom to do all that stuff. Today, we're going to start off just by talking about health. And since you know this live broadcast is about health, fitness, training, and nutrition, we're just going to break those down and what that means in a peak freak lifestyle. So today we're going to look at health. So to start off, what does health mean to you? What does the word health mean to you? What do you think of when you think health? When you say you want to be healthy, what does it mean? We know last week we talked about fitness. That was kind of the actual strength and muscle and energy and stuff like that. So what is health to you? You can put the comments and you can ask some questions, whatever. What is health to you? But generally, the, the meaning of health is energy or well-being or euphoria is even another one for health, or the actual definition is the general condition of the body or mind with reference or sound, reference to soundness and vigor. The soundness of body, of mind, and freedom from disease or ailment, it could also mean vigor and vitality. But I think that's not really what health. Health is a, is, can go either way, and we're going to get into that. Because to me, health is a state of your internal energy, is what health is to me. So to say that it's, the word health, the definition, you know, we always have our own peak freak definition of shit to say that health means freedom from disease and ailment. That's not what health means really to me. Health is just the state of your internal energy. That could mean either way. And we're talking about internally, physically, internally organs like your gut and your intestines, all that other shit, your lungs, your heart, but also your fucking brain internally. That is health to me. So just like uh, if you were on this, the Steve says on Tuesday, we talked about environment and the impact you have and the influence your environment has on you and the, the influence you can have on your environment, how those can all be either positive or negative and, it, and it's your choice. So to me, the word health alone is just a state or a, a state of your internal energy, so the, which could be good or bad to me. So the word health alone doesn't all of a sudden mean, oh, it's so great. You could have bad health. 
So, or you could have good health. Which one's it going to be? Your fucking body wants to be healthy naturally. And it is pre-programmed to keep you healthy and to keep your temperatures that they need to be and to keep flowing and processing shit on the inside in both your guts and your freaking brain. It is pre-programmed to keep you healthy and keep you moving automatically. But some people just abuse that right and abuse that, that the beauty of the inside of their freaking bodies. They just abuse the shit out of it. And by not using it enough, or not f- or fueling it with a bunch of nasty shit. So the energy of health or the state of health, although it wants to remain positive, it's, it's made to be positive. It wants to remain positive. But that state of health and state of energy on your inter- internally doesn't give a shit. It will go in whatever fucking direction you lead it or even whatever direction you force it in because a lot of you will force that shit in the wrong direction or in a bad direction, a negative direction, negative internal energy. And all your organs and your brain and all this other stuff. So under certain conditions, health has no choice but to be bad. If you neglect it and abuse it and, and fucking mistreat it, it's going to go in the negative direction. So there could be good health or bad health, just like your environment and your influence and the impact you can have can go in either direction. And it doesn't care. It's going to go in one direction. It's never going to stay still. It's going to go in one direction. It's up to you. So just as fitness last week, we talked about on Steve Does episode number one, just as fitness was more external energy and actually having the ability to do something health is the same idea and concept except it's internal energy at least that's my concept what i see it as and this is steve does this is how we're gonna do shit the peak freak freaking style of doing shit fitness is what's going on on the outside of your body health is what's going on on the inside of your body that's the way we look at it and that's the way we train it and think it and that's the way our processes work so we already know that both are impossible both the the fitness and the health the internal the external All that shit is impossible without having your shit together upstairs first in your head. Having a strong, positive freaking mindset. That is what's going to create everything. That's what moves everything. That's what's going to keep you going forward. And it's going to keep you in a straight fucking line. So we were, I'm going to tell you a quick story. A few weeks ago, I took these two little freak kids you just saw down here screaming. I took them to the Wild Animal Safari Park in San Diego. It's a huge freaking park. Picture this huge, massive park. Think of like the Bronx Zoo, but it's literally like, I don't even know, like 10 or 15 times the size of the Bronx Zoo. It's fucking huge. I'm making up that number, but it's huge. I know it is 1,800 freaking acres. That's 1,800 acres. That's an accurate number. So whatever the Bronx Zoo is, you do the fucking math. It's 1,800 acres, which is just under three square miles. Now that's a huge freaking park for like a zoo. And the reason why it's huge, that big, it's not like a regular zoo where they take a a, a big ass animal that's from the wild and from the jungle and put it in a little fucking cage that's not even as big as an animal's body and it's all crammed up like the Bronx Zoo. Last time I went to the Bronx Zoo, there was a shithole. There was like no animals there. It was like an empty fucking zoo. But whatever. We're not here to talk about zoos. But we are talking about zoos. So this, this safari park in San Diego is filled with wide open freaking areas where all the animals are just mixed together. For the most part, they're all mixed together. They had to probably separate the lines a little bit or he'll just fucking eat everything in sight. But they're just mixed together, merged together, just like they are in the wild. They're free to move around. Massive, massive, huge open areas of land and live the way they were meant to live, which is moving and free and active and fit and healthy. It's it's pretty fucking cool and much better than the San Diego Zoo even, which the San Diego Zoo, if you've ever been there, is probably one of the best actual zoos in the country or even the world. And the Safari Park is even better than that just because of the fact that the way that it's set up. There's some cages for some animals. Obviously, they need that. But in general, most of them are just spread out on like just massive fucking land and plains and in the hills just together with tons of different species all mixed together, just roaming around, doing their shit, staying together in their little packs the same way they were doing the wild. So it's pretty freaking cool to see them just naturally in their natural habitat, the way the animals are meant to be free, active, moving, living for the most part as much as they can on their own terms. But anyway, much like these animals, humans are meant to move free, just like this also, and meant to move around and be active and natural the way they're meant to be. The problem is most of you or most most people out there just abuse this freaking freedom and abuse your health with, you know, And it just takes a freak of your health. takes a beating from abusing the freedom that you have to move around and be active and and energetic. So at one spot in in the safari park, right, you can either take these winding wood steps that go up to this high next level for some reason, whatever it is, or you can take an elevator. There's only two options, the winding wooden steps or the elevator. Of course, I had to take these two little freak midgets up the stairs because that's just the way we fucking do things. 
But 75% of the lazy fucks that were there are standing there waiting for an elevator. There's a line waiting for the elevator to get up to the thing. They're waiting for like two or three trips to the elevator for their turn to get on the fucking elevator when it's just a few flights up of these stairs. Now, sure, it's hot, it's sunny, it's California, but come on, that's just fucking ridiculous. I was, I was, I almost thought the elevator was like selling the newest version of the fucking fruit phone or something with the long ass line of people that I saw. Have you, have you ever seen a fruit phone store? I just saw it the other day. The fruit phone store, it's freaking pathetic. They're selling there. There'll be a line wrapped around the block in the fucking winter in New York. It's like negative 17 fucking degrees outside. And these dumbasses are out there freezing their ass off outside the fruit phone store to get their new phone, you know, hours before the store opens to get the newest version of the fruit phone. Motherfucker, you just bought the previous version that came out like two and a half weeks ago, and now you need to get the new model or something because the model, the new model, the fruit phone now came out with the model 12 freaking Z.2.1.3 model, the newest one, you know, in the last two weeks. So it's, besides the fact that it's the same exact fucking phone that was released last month, except the only thing they changed, it's, it's like, it's like 0.0000000001 millimeter thinner than the last one. So, if, uh, you know, Logically, you need to fucking get that, right? So let me stand out in the cold like a jackass in New York, freeze my nuts off to go wait for the new fruit phone because it's a, it's a, a fraction of a fucking millimeter thicker, th- thinner than the other one. So I need to get that, of course. Anyway, we get sidetracked just because the way we do shit. Anyway, back to this safari. What the hell is that? I don't even know what the hell she's saying in there. Ita says, healthy to me means being in a healthy and clear state of mind. Everything else will follow. This Varus says... Something in Hebrew. I'm not sure what she said. Anyway, back to the safari and the elevator. Our freak family goes running up the stairs, so clearly we need to make it become a workout because that's just what we do with everything. We need to make it a race and a fun and a competition and different because that's just the way we roll. That's the way we do shit. So we're taking the stairs up, flying up the stairs, right? As we get to the top of the stairs or, or get near the top of the stairs, I hear these two people chanting and screaming at the top platform between the elevator and the top of the stairs, I hear some chanting going on. They're saying, we won, we won, we won. So I get to the top. There were these family members of the people that we flew by up the stairs. We flew by some people on the stairs because we're flying up those stairs, right? We flew by some people. The people at the top chanting, we won, apparently were the family members of the people that we passed going up the stairs, right? So the people at the top obviously decided to take the elevator and they beat their family members at the top. So at the top saying, we won, we won. So imagine you're approaching the top of a wooden staircase. Picture this. Picture this in your freaking brain. You're flying up this staircase. It's hot. You're sweaty. You're flying up this wooden staircase with your freak kids. You are a little hot, a little sweaty, slightly out of breath from sprinting up there, going as hard as you can. And you get to the top and you're greeted by these two people, one who has at least 50 pounds to lose and the other has well over 100 pounds to lose, right? Both of these people, picture it. Both of these people have this huge fucking cone of ice cream with vanilla stacked I don't even know how many fucking inches high it's just like gooping all over the fucking place and they're chanting we won we won while they're fucking wolfing down the ice cream now not we don't judge anyone of course but you could picture this scene right here so it's just pretty obvious now obviously I don't know anything about those people we don't really talk shit about them or whatever because we don't really know anything about them, but they did seem to ha- didn't have didn't seem to have any ailments other than just being fucking lazy, to tell you the truth. So, motherfucker, you did not win. You took an elevator up. You chose to eat your fucking ice cream and take an elevator up, and you're chanting "You won, you won" to your family members who took the stairs up. Way to motivate. Way to take charge, right there, right? But this is a pure example of disrespecting your energy and your state of health internally internally their organs are all fucked up and not only their their stomach and their intestines and their liver everything's just all fucked up in there from the shit that they're eating but their mind is fucked up by thinking by taking the elevator that they won just think it all their whole internal health from top to bottom forget about the external we already talked about that that part was obvious but their internal all their internals their internal health is just fucked up they think they won and they're chanting it and proud and probably want a fucking a, a trophy or an award for winning, you know, because that's just the way we do. We give a award. You need to give an award for everything nowadays. But they really have just, it's just a pure example of disrespecting the energy and the state of the health internally and forcing it into a bad state and negative fucking energy. That's what that is a prime example of. So your health can go either way. And for the most part, you decide with your choices and your habits, which direction your health is going to go. Is it going to go A or B, good or bad, positive or fucking negative. It is your choice. You control it for the most part. We know there's some things that whatever you can't 
avoid or whatever if there's something hereditary or you know some diseases pop up. But I guarantee a lot of the stuff that pops up out there could have been prevented or is caused by something that either you or the people in your environment or in your family in the past has created and caused by some of that negative internal energy. Most likely that's where it came from somehow. There's things you can't, I know there's things you can't affect or change or whatever, but you get my point. So you control the state of your internal organs and your brain with the garbage that you feed your internal organs and your brain with the shit food you eat and the shit thoughts you have in your fucking head like chanting, we won, we won, because you took an elevator up while you fucking were wolfing down this big ass, like six foot long ice cream shit that's fucking dripping, melting all over the place, but it's barely melting because you're eating it so fucking fast, doesn't even have time to fucking melt. But again, back on track. So you control either way by, you, for the most part and decide with your choices and habits which direction your health is going to be in. Your internal, mentally internally, and all here, all in the middle, is you're going to determine where it's going to go. So we have some questions that you guys sent in earlier today when I asked some questions. Always send them in. You can send, answer on face, send the questions on Facebook or you can email or text them. If you ever have any questions, you can email them to peakphysique.steve at gmail.com or you can text them to 845-893-6529 or just on Facebook, the Facebook Messenger or in one of the posts on Facebook. You can, whatever. There's millions of ways you can get that out there and we will answer them here each, each week on Steve Does in, cause you can get, you can Google answers, you can get information out there, but you want the peak freak way of doing it because that is the best way to do it around here and we know that shit and it's a different way of doing it because the old way of doing a lot of shit hasn't been working. It's been failing the American people for long enough, so we have our own peak freak perspective on how to get shit done. So a couple of questions. Let me see. We had some questions. If you have any questions, put them here in the comments right now. So today there was a question said, I'm just starting my weight loss journey. What do you think is the best diet for the quickest weight loss? So you're just on your weight loss journey. What do you think is the best diet for the quickest weight loss? So the first step before you even choose which diet you're going to do, which, which thing out there you're going to do, is to mentally prepare for the marathon and not the sprint. Don't think the quickest, quickest way to weight loss, the fastest weight loss, because that's going to cause you just to starve yourself and do things the wrong way and not last the long term. So the first thing you need to do is think about a marathon, not a sprint. You need to mentally prepare for that shit. It shit ain't gonna happen overnight. Don't go looking for the quick fix or the magic freaking pill. Fast weight loss most likely will eventually lead to even faster weight gain afterwards and probably more weight than you even had started off with in the beginning. So accelerating your results is a different story. You can accelerate your results by doing things, but not a quick fix or even an easy fucking fix, because accelerated results does not mean easy, that's for fucking sure, but accelerated results, which means boosting your potential of results or potential of outcome, would, would come with a complete overhaul of your eating habits, assuming that your current or past eating habits were pretty shitty. So that would be the way to do it, is to go literally like cold turkey and make all the changes all at once. But when it comes to changing your nutrition you can try to completely change everything all at once and that will definitely accelerate your progress and results. That is mostly the way we do it here at Peak Physique. But keep in mind, at Peak Physique, we're giving them daily support in person every day in the training sessions. We're also training them, telling them how to exercise, how to work out properly, effectively, the right intensities, how to modify and correct things, how to stay mentally strong in person. And then also, we're giving pretty much 24-hour a day support and accountability online in the 23 hours of the day that they're not in the gym or the 22 or 21 hours a day they're not in the gym because some of you fuckers spend several hours in there and that's what you want. This gym is your freaking home. You can stay as long as you want. Hang out all day with us. That's cool with us. So those, when, you're doing, when you have all that support system in place like they have here at the gym, you have a much higher chance of complying to a complete overhaul. Like if you're just eating totally shit and then you just start training and you say, okay, I'm going to go from 100% shit to 100% perfect it's hard to do if you don't have this complete support system like we have at Peak Physique. So, but it is possible to, it's gonna, it's gonna make it much more possible and a higher chance of complying with the complete overhaul, you know, of your past poor shitty eating habits. But if you're just doing this on your own, cause this was actually a question. Yes, cold turkey. Benner did a cold turkey and that shit worked for him, but he, he has the support system of the gym. But this question actually came from someone who is not a member of our gym. And I'm not sure if that she lives in this area. And I think she actually lives in the area. 
but she's not a member of the gym right now. So we also want to help as many people out there as possible that even haven't even been to, to Peak Physique yet. So, so if you are doing this on your own and don't have the amazing support system like we have at Peak and you don't have anyone to guide you and you don't have anyone to lead you and you don't have anyone to hold you accountable or anyone to get in touch with and answer your questions 24 hours a day pretty much like we do at Peak and have a team hundred strong army of all the other Peak Freak members to help you out, then attempting to switch everything all at once might fucking backfire on you. So it might just be a too much of a shock to you or you might do it wrong or make some mistakes here and there and you end up breaking down. You binge on a bunch of bullshit, binge eat, and the next thing you know, you're even worse than where you started and you never gave yourself a real chance and you just end up quitting again and again on that never-ending freaking roller coaster like you've done over the last past 10 fucking years. So, how do you overcome that if you're attempting to do this on your own? So the way you do it, attempt to do it on your own without going cold turkey, if you don't know that's going to be a problem, it's just not going to fit who you are and it's not going to fit the support system you have because for whatever reason, then it's going to be like anything else that you're doing when you're lifting weights or anything else is going to be periodization. You're going to introduce one new change at a time or maybe one major new change at a time with like, one or two smaller changes with it. And we're talking about a small nutritional change at a time, depending on what we're talking about, how much weight we're talking about, how bad was your diet, and then each day or even each week or even each month, depending on how you're progressing, how you're dealing with those changes, you're going to introduce another freaking change or another couple of changes every week or every month or even every day. depends on how fast you're progressing, how mentally are you holding up, how are you holding up without that support system. Then master that shit, whatever that one change is, Master that shit and then just keep adding another change to that on top of that and just keep building, 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 building until you finally have your shit together and eventually you'll be almost completely clean eating and it will take a little bit longer than if you just went cold turkey and did it all at once but I'll tell you what, taking a little bit longer and a little slower progress is better than just completely fucking quitting again like you might have done in the past. So even at a slower pace, the uh, you know this periodization rate is a little slower of implementing one small change at a time, your results and weight loss will still be 10 times quicker than the amount that you would have, you know, have the amount of time that you've been unhappy with the diet that you're in. So don't think slow is always going to be bad. Sometimes slower is better and it might work for you. If you're in, if you're in our program, we go cold turkey. Everyone that comes here, we expect you cold turkey because we know we're here with you day in and day out with you nonstop to help you every fucking second of the way. And we give you that 24 hour support and you have this team and this family, this peak freak family to help you out. So when you're actually on our program, we're going to have you go cold turkey and we're going to make that shit happen. And it's happened. But there are certain individuals that come in and cold turkey doesn't work for them, even in the gym. And you know what? We just use this periodization technique and we break it down piece by piece, step by step. Everyone's a little different. So some people cold turkey just didn't work and we knew they're going to crash and burn and they're not going to survive in the system. So we break it down for them, but that's what the day we, we can do for them on a, on a daily basis. So if you're on your own, probably periodization is going to work better than cold turkey, but you know how strong you are mentally and how weak you are and if you're going to break. So that's something to decision you're going to need to make. You're going to go cold turkey or you're going to go through a periodization program where you're adding one change at a time, mastering that change, nailing it, not being affected by it, and then adding a building on top of that, building blocks to success. Any questions, you can put them in the comments. The next question we had was, what is the best time of day to work out and what should I eat before and after my workouts? These are two questions in one. And so we're going to go over both of them. So the best time of day to work out, you know you're always going to get a, a, a backwards, create a different type of answer when it's a peak freak answer. The best time of day to work out is whatever time you're going to actually fucking show up. That is the best time. Whatever time you're actually going to be consistent with. Whatever time you're going to show up, have a positive attitude, and fucking kick ass. That's the best time to work out. So for everyone, that's different. So just me to say, oh, the best time to work out is 6 a.m. because neurologically this and bullshit that, your metabolism and your whatever, your heart rate, bunch of bullshit. It's whatever's going to fucking work for you up here. All that other shit doesn't matter if you don't have your shit together up here. Like we said, all these things do not matter if you don't have your shit together up here. So... The best time to work out is whatever time you're going to get your ass into the gym. I don't care what time that is for you. For some people, that might be 5 a.m. For some people, it might be 5 p.m. Some people, it might be 8 p.m., 10 p.m. Some people want to train before work. Some people, after work. Whatever time you're going to get consistent and make it happen a minimum three, four, five times a week, that's the time you need to do. Whatever time you can get to the gym consistently and make it happen and actually show the fuck up because that is also one of the hardest part is just showing up. So whatever time you will make that will make you be consistent and hopefully the time that you're going to have the most energy, that is the best time for you. So it's different for everyone according to your schedule, your, your, your work, your kids, whatever you have to figure out. But we know you need to put yourself first because there's no point in 
revolving around everyone else's schedule if you don't have your own shit together. You're not going to be able to help them if you can't help yourself first. Get your own shit in order first. So 5 a.m. workouts might change your freaking life. It, it, it takes a whole new level of discipline and mindset, and my 5 a.m. peak freaks know all about this, to make it consistently to a peak physique boot camp or boxing session at 5 a.m. five days a week. Now, that takes some serious mindset and discipline to make that happen. So it will create, doing a, doing a 5 a.m. session makes you a whole different beast. It changes your life. It will literally change your life if you start training at 5 a.m. Because it's going to create structure and control in your day and your entire fucking life that you never knew you had, that you never knew you were capable of. It gets to 9 a.m. You're like, you feel like the day could be over. You've already accomplished so much in your day. You've already gotten up. You've eaten nutritional stuff. You've already trained, busted your ass, killed a bunch of fucking fat, then had a post-workout meal, got your kids ready, got ready for work, got to work, started your day, start working, you're like, what the fuck? The rest of the day is going to be a joke. I've already got, it's already a success. You're at 9 a.m. You're just going to ride that success wave, ride that fucking energy wave the rest of the day for those 5 a.m. freaks. It gives you a whole different world, a whole different mindset when you get on that track, like daily, day in and day out, attacking that shit. It's going to change your life and structure. So 5 a.m. is a great time to work out if that works out, if that works for you. So the important thing is that you understand how to fuel your body properly depending on what time you decide to train. Because the time of day you decide to train is going to determine, you know, which leads us right to your second question, is what I should eat before and after my workout. So if you're training at 5 a.m., you need to eat differently than if you're training at, at, our, at our 8, 15 p.m. boot camp or boxing classes at peak. You need to eat differently. If you're training at 5 a.m., you need to eat before your session. You need to wake up early enough that you can eat 30 to 45 minutes before your session, but it, it needs to be something light. And you know what type of stuff your internal, your health deals with, when you're on a short-term basis, we're talking about 30 minutes. So maybe having like someone with a Greek yogurt knows that in 30 minutes, they're not going to be ready to work out because it's just too thick and too heavy in their gut. So you need something lighter. Like the best thing that we have at peak is the Herbalife beverage drink mix, which has 15 grams of protein. It's like a, a juice. It's totally light. You can even drink it during a workout. And it wouldn't affect you, even give you like energize you probably. And that's like the go-to thing we use for our 5 a.m. people is the Herbalife beverage drink mix that we sell in both locations because you know what type of heavy stuff might screw up your screw up your stomach? They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but really that's you know just another bullshit saying. They say who the fuck is they? First of all, I don't know who the fuck they is. I like to meet they. They seem pretty fucking smart. Fuck they. They say breakfast is the, is the most important meal of the day, but really your post workout meal, that's your workout right after your your meal right after your workout is your most important meal of the day, followed by your second most important meal of the day, which is your workout that you have before your workout. So. Your, your day needs to revolve. Your meal and your nutrition revolves around where your workout is. That's going to determine what you eat, when you eat it, how much you eat it, and all that stuff. And then maybe the famous breakfast that they talk about is maybe the third most important meal of the day because you do want to be fueled for your day in the morning regardless of when you're going to work out. So your eating needs to be based around your training session. Your post-workout, post-workout, your muscles are just fucking empty. They're starving. They're fucking spent. They should be, at least if you're training the way we train at peak, in the bootcamp boxing classes, they should be starving. They should be starving. So they're ready. You're after your session, your body is overly receptive. Those muscles are just going to be sucking in, taking in whatever you give them. They're overly receptive to what it, to when you, when you feed it, they need it. They're hungry. It needs to be freaking replenished your muscles. So any carbs that'll be taken into your body are going to be taken in and stored to be used for fuel in the future because they're empty of carbs. Your muscles are going to be empty of carbs after the training session. That's what we want. And any protein that you get right after the session is going to be taken in right away. Those ripped, those muscles are all torn and ripped and need repair. So they're going to be receptive to the protein and they're going to suck it in quick. You're going to get an insulin rush because you're so low on it. It's going to rush them into your muscles, rush them in there. And the protein is going to start break, uh, repairing the breakdown that you had in the muscles and building a lean muscle to make you fucking stronger and leaner and fucking harder than you were before. So for meal timing, we know we want to eat every two to three hours that we're awake throughout the day. And you want to eat as soon as possible when you get up in the morning. I'm done with my first fucking meal before I'm even done getting dressed. Before I even tie my freaking shoes, I'm done with my first meal. Something quick, something small, but you need to boost your metabolism right away. So think about a fire, a fire burning in your house in the morning. You want to eat small meals throughout the day. You want to need your metabolism burning throughout the day. If you have a 15 books you throw into the fire first thing in the morning, you have this big, huge fire, but it's going to fizzle out in like two to three hours. You got to throw another 15 books in there to get it going again. But... If you just have two to three books in the fireplace burning and every two to three hours you throw another two to three books in, just like these small meals, you have a nice small steady flame and that's how we want our metabolism, just constantly burning all throughout the day. So that's how it should be going before and after the workout.
which led into, so that's before 5 a.m. What about if you're at 8.15? So the next question from another person was, what time should I stop eating at night? And again, you know there's not going to be a straightforward answer because that's not the shit works in the fitness industry. That's not the shit way that works inside your fucking body. That's not shit the way it works inside your brain. And that's certainly not the shit the way shit works at peak physique. You know things are always going to be a little different. It's always going to depend. So this also depends on when your workout is. If you trained at one of our 8.15 p.m. sessions, in that, which they're available in the Nanuet location, you will still need to eat a meal after your session. I don't care if you're going to sleep at 10 p.m. You finish at 9.15 with that workout, you're going to get home or you're going to eat something right there. Have it ready at the gym. Have your post-workout protein shake ready for you the second you're done working out. Because again, your body's receptive to it. You want to pump that, get that shit into you as soon as possible. So it also depends on what time you go to sleep. So you can eat as late as you want as long as it's protein-based. You can go to sleep on protein, but you cannot go to sleep on carbs and fat. It's just going to get stored. You can go to sleep on protein. That protein will just build up and repair your sleep. It's not going to make you fucking fat as long as you're not having like hundreds and hundreds of grams of protein just stuffing your face with thousands of calories of protein immediately before you go to sleep. You're going to be totally fine and you're not going to have to worry about it. It's going to go right into preparation or right into repairing, not preparation. So you're going to be fine. You could literally, I'll eat sometimes protein or even like egg whites or something right before I go to sleep. I don't, it doesn't matter. You could sleep on protein. You cannot sleep on carbs and fat. We have any, anything here? So what's, what should the post-workout meal be? So should the post-workout meal be your biggest meal? It can be. It probably should be. It's going to be. Especially that'll be a real, if you're in the morning, and you, work, you wake up, you have a little small, tiny meal just to get you through the workout, to, to fuel your workout. You do your workout, your body's going to be completely empty. When you were asleep, your body was not fueled. It was still burning calories in your sleep, right? You wake up, you have just a small enough meal just to get you through your training session. By the end of your training session, your body is empty. It's spent. So it could be fueled with the most. So your biggest meal should be probably post-workout unless it's that 8.15, that late night workout. Then it can't be your biggest meal because you're already built up, you had enough stored energy for that workout throughout the day. So you don't need such a big meal after an A15 workout. You've already stored enough enough energy and blood sugar and glycogen in your muscles to fuel that workout for A15. So you just need that normal eating going up to A15. You don't even need to worry about that pre-meal as long as you had it, you know, a couple hours before, you're going to be good. You had all that all that carbs and 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 calories stored up throughout the day. So right after the A15 should be a very small meal, probably one of your smallest meals post workout after A15. But at 5 a.m. or even 9 a.m., you haven't built much up in your body yet. So yeah, after that workout, it's like that's feeding time. That's fuel time. That's you you could eat, you could realize if you especially once you're not looking for weight, eventually you get to the point where you're not looking for so much weight loss, you could eat so much shit right after your workout. Not bad stuff. I'm just saying so much food, so many calories after that workout, good calories, good quality calories, even a little bit of carbs. And you're going to be totally fine. So that's also the time that you could get away with the most carbs in in your nutrition is based around your workout. That small meal before your workout and that bigger meal right after your workout. Your body's receptive to it. It's going to take those, your muscles are going to be empty of carbs. Your blood sugar is low. That's why you feel dizzy sometimes. That's your blood sugar probably low. So you're receptive to those carbs. It's going to take those carbs and put them where they need to go to get ready for the next work you're going to do, for the energy you're going to have throughout the day. So you're always just using carbs and fat for fuel. We do not want to use protein for fuel. That's how you eat away your muscle. But that's that. Those are the questions we have. Is there any other questions here? We'll ask. We'll answer them. If you have any other questions, put them in. Or if you missed something, just put them in the comments. But don't forget, every Tuesday, Steve says, every Thursday, we're going to pick a set time. It's not usually going to be this late, I don't think, on Thursdays. But we'll see. We're going to pick a time that seems like it's working for you the best on Thursday. You know, Tuesdays right now is at 2.15. And that's just part of our Tuesday. We talk about mental, the mental side of the game, getting your shit together mentally on Tuesdays. And we talk about what you actually need to do now with that mental power that you have to implement. Thursday is all about implementing the diet, the nutrition, the training, the fitness, the health. We know we said the fitness is on the outside. The health is on the inside. We're talking about today. What does health freaking mean to you? That's what it's all about. I'll talk to you guys later. Get your ass to the gym. There's still sessions tonight going on. You still have 6.15, 7.15, and 8.15 in Nanuet, and you still have 6.15 and 17 in Suffering. Get your ass to the gym. Post-workout. Refuel yourself. Get your shit together. Any questions, put them in there. I will reply to every single comment personally, and I'll talk to you later. No excuses.